Alright folks, here we are again, now with an Infinity Arena team. So, I'm going to give you some tips on building an Infinity Arena team, because it's a bit different from some of the other aspects of the game. And I'm also going to give you a team that will speed you through the first 100 levels and get you up into the 150s, 150 pluses. Easy peasy. So quickly, how does the Infinity Arena work? You're going to fight wave after wave of three monster teams that are gradually increasing in level and increasing in power. The more points you get, the quicker the level scale, the quicker you go up the ladder, the more powerful teams you face. So when we're building a team, we've got to bear a few things in mind. One, if we want to move quickly through the lower levels, we've got to smash through the team, so we need a nice synergy to breeze through the lower levels. Otherwise, you'll be playing for hours before you get to 100. It's a bit of an over-exaggeration, but you get the idea. Next, when we get to the high levels, every monster hits like a truck. And so all of our monsters need really strong survivability. And we can do that through a number of ways, which we're going to probably try and draw on all of them, to be honest. So obviously, you can increase your health, you can have a high level of damage, and you can build a lot of shield. Next, you can look at applying debuffs like weakness, which will decrease the effectiveness of the opponent's attacks and another very popular option is to try and apply blinds onto the opponent monsters so that their huge massive powerful horrific attacks misses got a chance to kill them before one of them finally lands we're also going to need strong healing might even want to look at a monster that will revive because occasionally things are going to go wrong Three monsters are going to pick on one of your monsters, and it can get messy. But that is the basics. So, let me give you a team to get you through the early levels. And with one simple monster change, you can switch from burning through the easy levels to really competing at the top sort of 150 plus levels. I should also point out that the monsters that appear at every level is randomized. So sometimes you can get a really lucky run where you're not facing um, as many weaknesses or as many horrific monsters as you might expect at the top levels. And other times, it might all go wrong really quickly. So, let's get cracking. Right, so, first up on the monsters list is our tank shielder weakness applier, Diavola. You might have guessed this from a previous video when I was hunting Diavola down, which, if you need to 5-star Diavola, check my previous video, I'll link it. Diavola has basically got one job, and that is, in the fourth column here, the weakening shield. They're going to shield all the allies, huge amount of shielding, and also apply the weakness debuff to enemies. We're going to take any additional buffs that improve this shielding. Observe. Combo shielding. We're also making sure that we take multi-weakness. Again, we're going to stack these weakness debuffs ensuring that the enemies are doing as little amount of damage as possible. All this shielding is defense-based, so when it comes to items and food, etc., we're just going to pile on the defense. The only other point I'll make is that, in terms of a shift, we're looking at the light shift of Diavola, where every time we apply a debuff to somebody, like all these weaknesses, there's a 60% chance we're going to gain a random buff. Other than that, we're taking the shielding ultimate, which is also going to apply Barrier and Glory. But Diavola is pretty straightforward how we're going to play it. Equipment, we are, we are stacking defense. No other stat is really that important. So we're completely stacking defense. So look, shield, bracelet, bit of mana regen to ensure we're going to have enough to uh, perform our skills. Defense with the shell. Defense and health with hide. Just keep us alive. That's all you've got to do. Keep us alive. Second in our... Quadro? Quartet? Quartet is Rocky. And Rocky's going to play the role of support here. So the real reason we want Rocky is this skill in the third tree. Disoriented. Weakness debuffs, which we're going to stack, cause enemies affected by it to have a 7.5% chance to miss each hit. So not only are we reducing their damage, we're reducing the chances that they're actually going to land these hits. We're also going crazy. We're having more multi-weakness which is only adding negligible gains there, because we're at six stacks already. But then we're taking Mass Restore to heal and remove debuffs, 
also in this tree quite useful is meditation to gain charge stacks and items like protector where everybody reduces it gets a damage reduction of 7.5 percent tranquility is also very nice so each nature and spirit monster applies weakness on a random action so all of our first three monsters are going to be nature monsters and having spore, spore at level 5 is quite useful because once these charge stacks build up from all the healing that we're doing, there might be a time later in the game where we want an additional attack to be fired in, and this spore does the job nicely. For the ultimate, we're taking the healing ultimate for more healing, more shielding, and we've taken the light variant of Rocky for extra charge stacks for all our monsters. So as Rocky's going to be doing all of our healing, we've got Restoring Wand, which improves healing, buffing, and shielding, and drum, which again improves healing, because we're going to be taking a lot of hits, and we've got to make sure we can heal our way through all of them. Now, I think it's time I give a tip around defense reduction, defense and damage reduction levels. So I've always been a big fan of just stacking as much defense as possible. The higher up your damage reduction gets, the more points into defense it takes to improve that damage reduction any further. So you're getting fewer and fewer gains the higher up your defense gets. And in this case, because we're going to apply a lot of shield, it actually makes a lot of sense to add health alongside defense. And I really wouldn't recommend going much above 60% damage reduction in any of these other monsters. Diavola is a separate case because the shielding is based around defense, so every point of defense helps. However, from here on in, it's a nice balance of health and defense. And here we're up to 6k health with Rocky and 62% damage reduction. We've also achieved that by feeding Rocky bananas for additional health rather than the usual defense stacking that I might have gone for previously. Next up for speeding through the lower levels is Fungi. Fungi is going to poison everything, spread the poison everywhere, do a load of damage based on all the debuffs that are on the enemies. And this is a really easy build because we're taking the two magical trees plus anything that triggers additional hits. So all about the damage with Fungi. The Dark version gives us a chance to spread debuffs every time that we apply a debuff, which is brilliant. And Spore Nebula, which applies even more weakness. You'll also notice that I've gone for multi-weakness again, just for the lols, but 9 stacks of weakness is, uh, is massively overkill for the situation. So for equipment, and so for equipment, I went for additional damage hits. So we've gone with Bow, which has slightly lower magical power, but has 30% damage hit on top of any attack. Also, we picked up Lightning Sphere, which gives every hit a 5% chance to apply Shock or Armor Break. So these debuffs are racking up quickly. Then a little bit of defense and mana regen, and more magic in the form of a wizard hat. And we're also feeding the fungi bananas for additional health. And I promise you, these three will breeze through the first 100 levels. You can do it with my final monster as well, but it's a bit slower. But after a first round with these guys, you can easily have applied sort of 25 debuffs on the enemy team without even thinking about it. And then the damage you'll rack up as the rounds go on is just insane. You'll 5 star or even 6 star most of the rounds. So you'll fly through those levels really quickly. And this is great because it even gives you a chance to experiment at the higher levels quicker. So, the small problem with those three that I've given you so far is that they all have a weakness to fire. So the moment you come across one monster in the higher levels which does damage to all fire damage, it's curtains. So when we get to the higher levels, we need more survivability but we still need damage. So, Nautilid is our answer. Nautilid isn't susceptible to fire. Nautilid has attacks which continue to stack up debuffs in the form of armor break and applying poison. Most importantly, Nautilid has attacks which can apply stacks of blind, both in the form of darken and in the form of this shadow grasp, which applies three stacks of blind straight off the bat. So we're going to use this to focus on the high damaging enemies towards the end levels all enemies are high damaging, and hopefully they're going to miss enough times that we live long enough to kick their ass. Got an additional ultimate which deals more stacks of blind and does a huge amount of damage. 
we've got Charge Beam, which not only does a large amount of damage, but applies sorcery to ourselves, which allows us to deal even more magical damage. And with Multi Sorcery, we're going to be able to stack that multiple times. And there's a nice little Shield Aura skill here, which makes all of our shielding in the team 10% more effective. And with that, we're going to be more survivable than Fungi was. And we're going to have a way to dodge all these massive attacks that are coming in, coupled with the weakness that we're applying with our other monsters still in the party. So, let me show you how it all works and how we speed through the early game, and then how we survive the later rounds. Okay, so we're at about level 105 here, and we're still burning through the monsters. Let me show you how it works. Diavola is going to apply Weakening Shield first. That's weaknesses, chills, and poisons have already landed on the, the opponent monsters. Then full utility is going to buff Fungi, most importantly with sidekick for extra hits. Then Fungi is going to come along with Spore Nebula and do this. Watch these debuffs rack up. There you go. That's two and three stacks of poison each. Six to seven stacks of weakness each. Some chills, some armor breaks, some charges. You're looking at close to 30 debuffs in one round there. So now we're going to armor up ultimate with Diavola. Rocky is going to use shield cast, which reduces the mana requirement for the rest of the team. Uh, and this really helps with the items that we've picked. We don't have to go so heavy into mana regeneration. And now we can poison cloud and poison bomb our way through everybody because everybody's got huge poison stacks on them already. And with the weaknesses in them, they still can't do enough damage to kill us. And we're going to continue to heal and shield our way through this. Mass Restore to remove some debuffs. And then we're just going to pick them off with Poison Cloud or Poison Bomb. And before you know it, a Poison Bomb is going to come along. Hit them once more. Let the debuffs do the work. And we can use the Spore of Rocky just to finish them off. And everyone's going to be dead while whilst, whilst we're still on full health and full shield. And that will give us five. That'll give us five stars, increase the level seven times, and we will fly up the levels. There we go, we're at 112 now. So as it gets more difficult, we're at about level 150 here. It's a very similar thing, but we've got Nautilid at the end. So we've been a bit more conservative. We're still casting the shields. Then we're casting shield cast to protect us and reduce our mana requirements. And then we're going to use Shadow Grasp. I think it'll be Mowgli. That does the damage, so we've pumped blinds onto Mowgli. Okay. And we're going to keep on repeating this, but we'll spread the blinds around to ensure that they keep on missing. While still maintaining the level of weakness debuffs that we've had previously. Here we go. Dark Shroud. Stack more blinds. See, that's another three stacks of blind there, so hopefully they can't hurt us too badly. Plenty of misses flying up there. Yeah, and then Caraglow comes in and smashes us. So we're not having any more of that. We're going to heal our way through it again. And this time, we're going to apply Blind onto Caraglow. There you go. Six stacks of Blind now. So now that's two of them that shouldn't be able to hurt us too badly. There you go. You see, three misses straight off there. And we're, all of a sudden, we're much more survivable than we were with Fungi. And you just have to keep on repeating this, keep on healing up, removing the debuffs. These battles take a little longer because they're much harder. And here you can see, we even get to a point where Spore on Rocky is enough to completely wipe out one of the monsters. So we're going to pick that now. Okay, almost completely wipe out once the debuffs kick in. And there we go. Actually, in this run, the cat was bugged and had no health bar. But eventually it does, it does, it eventually dies. I think I kill it here. There we go. And then it's dead. And that's level 150 something and we're still 5 star in it. Level 150 plus, away you go. I think you can take these concepts and you can make your own teams with it as well. You don't have to follow what I've done. And if you do, I'd love to hear how you get on. I know that people like to post the teams. I'd like to try and make my own. I think that's some of the fun of it. 
Uh, so hopefully the tips and the ideas here will help you as well. But also, don't be afraid to just use my team and run with it. So there we go, guys. Thank you very much to everybody for watching. Thank you very much for all the subs we've had recently as well. Uh, really appreciate it. And enjoy your Monster Sanctuary, everybody. I will catch you in a bit.